Here we're going to tie Mercer's tungsten swing caddis. First thing we're going to do is just start some white thread near the middle of the hook. And uh, I put a bead on the hook as well, a tungsten black bead. And you can just leave it rattling around up there for now. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to tie in uh, your olive tubing or your, your orange or brown, whatever color you're going to tie. And we're going to wrap just a little bit down the shank of the hook here. We're going to try to cover up all this tubing with our white thread. This white thread will make a nice bright olive body. So I'm just covering up all that tubing. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to stop at about the halfway point and then I'm going to wrap this tubing forward. And you can use D-rib for this as well. I prefer to use a little bit of tubing. I like the body to lay nice and flat. And once you have captured your tubing, I'm going to take my white thread just a little farther forward and then I'm just going to switch into my, my black thread. White thread is just to keep that body nice and bright. Now we're going to tie in a CDC feather. I'm just going to take a brown CDC feather and clip into the tip with my hackle pliers. Stroke all that CDC backwards. I usually peel a little bit of the fluffy stuff out of the, the butt end as well. So I just peel it all back exposing the tip. I'm just going to tie in the tip of that CDC and I can trim out any of the excess pieces. And I'm going to clip into that CDC feather with my hackle pliers. Very delicately going to stroke those CDC feathers rearward with each wrap. If I can, stroke them back. I'll keep them laying nice and softly towards the back. Then I can capture that CDC feather once I've done three, four turns. Try not to trap too many of the fibers if you can avoid it. Then you can trim out your CDC. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that CDC, I'm going to stroke it back just so it lays, lays back a little bit here. There we go. And generally what I like to do with this fly is the CDC usually tends to be fairly long so I'm just going to take that CDC pull it all back with my fingers. I'm going to trim it about the length of the body, maybe a little bit longer. There we go. I don't want it to be too wild and crazy. Now the next thing to do is to take a little bit of ice dubbing. You can use a few different colors of ice dubbing. You can use the brown ice dubbing. You can use the pheasant tail ice dubbing. You can even use a little bit of black. I think here I've got the yeah, I've got the pheasant tail. You can even use the olive too. I think Mike Mercer might use the brown on this fly. I'm going to use a little bit of pheasant tail. It's pretty close to the same color. And I'm just going to build up a little bit of a thorax here right in front of my CDC. This will be like a little hot spot here. And then I'm going to take that bead and I'm going to slide it back and jump my thread in front of that bead. I'm just going to push it back into that dubbing. Then I'm going to take a little bit of more ice dubbing here. I'm going to put a little bit of ice dubbing and I'm going to wrap kind of right up over that bead. I want to put that ice dubbing right over that bead. You can kind of pick it out here in a minute if you need to. I'll kind of dub it fairly loose. It can be a little bit shaggy in the front here. There we go. And I'm going to take my thread to just in front of that bead. I'll kind of rough up that ice dubbing here with my fingers. 
try to get it to cover that bead. It kind of you want it to look like a, a little bit of a veil covering that bead. Now we're ready for the front collar here. For that, I'm going to use a partridge feather. I'm going to clip into the tip of the partridge feather. Take my fingers and stroke all the fibers back, exposing all those really tiny pieces up near the tip. If you need to peel off a few of the fibers down near the bottom and make it a little easier to work with, you can. I just strip off all the base feathers. Once you've got that feather prepped, you're going to tie it in by that little delicate tip. Being very careful not to break the tip. I can trim out the tip. Any of the pieces of ice stubbing that have gotten caught as well. And I'm going to take my thread right up to the eye. I'm going to take that partridge feather. And with my first wrap, I'm just going to get it started. If you need to, you can take these fibers and gently, gently stroke them back. That'll help them lay down, cooperate with you a little more. And then once you've got the feather wrapped, you can capture it with your thread. Trim out the stem. And if you need to, this one laid back pretty good for me, so I don't really need to wrap up onto the feathers. But if you need to, if you have some that are facing forward that didn't cooperate, you can wrap back up onto that feather ever so slightly. That'll help keep it in place. And really, all there is to do with this fly now is to whip finish and this fly you can nymph it or swing it. it has that bead in it that helps it sink helps get it down that ice stub acts as a little hot spot helps the fish find it a little bit of an attractor fly that CDC on the butt there will hold a little bit of an air bubble making it look like the fly is emerging. That's all there is to the Mike Mercer's tungsten swing caddis.